Phone's off. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to my holiday table. Oh, guess what? Happy holidays. It's almost time for the holidays, and I have some recipes that I want to share with you. Number one, I'm just so excited to be here with HEB in the headquarters of this beautiful kitchen and all the amazing people behind the scenes making it happen um, just for you. But today we're going to do three very special recipes. These are recipes that are near and dear to my heart because they are family. When I think about them, they are traditions that have been passed down. One of the recipes we're gonna make is gumbo. It is the most requested thing I get at Root Southern Table in Dallas where everyone's like, can I get gumbo? How do you make it? Why is yours different? All of those things we will discuss tonight, okay? So we're gonna do our gumbo. We're gonna do a jalapeno and cheese cornbread. And we're also gonna do eggnog. It is a family tradition. It is so different than what you would normally have and anything that you can just pick up. But I think it's special and it holds a very special place in my heart. So let's get started. I want to start with gumbo. I'm so stoked for this entire menu, Chef, because we talked earlier about you, uh, like literally you're inviting us in your home. You're sharing these recipes. And these are recipes. And we're going to talk about your grandma because your grandma like <laughs> she ha she knows she knew some tricks before they were tricks. Like, I I'm, agree. I agree. I'm excited. All right. When we're talking about gumbo, we really need to start with one thing, and that's the roux. The roux takes a bit of time to get going, but the actual gumbo itself doesn't take as long as what most people think. So you have to have a delicious, beautifully browned roux, and what you have here is just that. So it's not too dark depending on what area you're from, right? So those in New Orleans typically make a darker roux. It's typically a little bit, mm, it could be thicker or not, depending on where, you know, who and where you learned how to make gumbo. Mine is more of a chocolate and more of like um, medium chocolate, right? Not super dark and not very thick. And I think that it just yields a great product without the bitterness that you get. So here, I have two cups of flour, one and a half cups of oil. And what I've done is popped it in the oven. So I cooked the roux in the oven. That way, you only have to stir it three times. Every 30 minutes, you give it a little whisk, you let it do its thing. 400 degrees for one and a half hours. Thank me later, because when that you're making 50 gallons, you need to be able to do it in the oven. Yeah. No one wants to stand and do this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that was going to say, that is probably the best takeaway is doing it in the oven. So literally, you can have other stuff going on. You can get everything ready so it doesn't become like this standing there, like attached, chained to the, uh, to the stove <laughs> while you're trying to stir it without burning it. Yes. Okay, so here, what I need to do whenever I'm ready to use it. So, guys, when I'm at the restaurant... I make roux in advance. I can make it up to a week in advance. I put it up, set it off on the counter, um, and you don't have to worry about it spoiling really because there's nothing really but flour and oil. Um, once we get it to the consistency and whenever I'm ready to use it, then I heat it up again like I'm doing right now. I want to see some bubbles because what we're going to do is take some of our aromatics. So um, in cooking with anything like Louisiana, we talk about Trinity. And what that means is onion, celery, bell pepper, and oftentimes we add garlic. I was happy because all of my onions and celery were pre-cut at HEB. <laughs> so hello, go ahead. Don't worry about doing all of that extra work. You can go and get it all already chopped up and it makes your life easier and it works out beautifully. Time-saving tips, right? It's all about yes. time saving. Yes, I love it. Okay, so now it's getting hot. What's happening is we're smelling this nutty, almost peanut butter smell um, that's coming from the root, and that's how you know you're at the, the level of darkness where you should be. All right, so now my onions are gonna go in. And Chef, you talked about, talk a little bit about, you, you said in different parts of Louisiana, like there's different thicknesses of roux, and you don't like 
a really thick gumbo. Like when you serve it at Roots, it's not super, it's not like one of those super thick gumbos. It's a little bit thinner, right? Correct. Yeah, our gumbo, and this is more of a household traditional. My family is from Baton Rouge in Port Allen, Louisiana, and most of the gumbo that we would have would be a little bit thinner. Not like water, but definitely not thick like I've seen. I've seen gumbos where it's just staying. I'm, no, no, no. <laughs> Um, and so we like it, again, not as dark, um, but all the flavor. So here, I want you to notice that you'll see, oh my gosh, the onions are starting to smell great. The onions is now frying in the roux. So I'm adding in the bell pepper, and it's Everything's frying. frying. Everything's frying, I love that. Celery. And you'll see the gumbo and the roux start to really start to thicken. A little bit. You see that? How now it's like just really thick, and that's good. So, what's happening is all of the onion, the bell pepper, the celery, and I'm gonna add in the garlic, it's taking the flavor, and the flavor from that is now going into the root, and that's what we need. It creates a very different flavor versus kind of how I've seen people do where they will saute it all and just throw it into the liquid. This is a step you don't wanna miss, okay? It's this garlic. beautiful foundation of that flavor, right? It's just total, without this, it's like, what is it, right? Vegetable exactly. Soup? And I love that when it hits the root, all of the smells change. Like you can smell the onion, the bell pepper, the garlic, all of that all in one. Okay. Smells so good. So now I am going to add in some tomato product. It could be tomato paste, tomato sauce is what I like. And I'm gonna add that right in and kind of fry that again with the roux. That also adds in flavor. So in French cooking, when we take tomato and we cook it down into like, whether it's oil or like this, it's considered pincé. And pincé means to fry tomato. So it brings out, again, the caramelization um, with the tomato. Also guys, any questions you have, feel free to use the chat and ask away, no problem. You see that color? That's what we're looking for, right there with that tomato. Now, I'm gonna add in some stock. Chef, will you repeat your, your oven roux process one more time for the folks at home? Absolutely. You're seriously writing down that fantastic note? Yes. So I do 400 degrees for one and a half hours, and I stir it every 30 minutes. So three times for an hour and a half. We make it every week at the restaurant. It works out exact one and a half hours, right, Scott? One and a half hours, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll throw myself under the bus, <laughs> Chef, because uh, I made this earlier for Chef because she was, she's been very busy running down from Dallas, obviously. I made the roux, and it was a little too dark, so under the proper tutelage of Chef Tiffany Dairy, we made the proper roux, and I now know exactly what the perfect chocolate roux looks like. So I appreciate it, but I, uh, I screwed it up, I messed it up. I killed the first one, but the second one, we saved and it's beautiful now. Y'all, he didn't kill it. It just, it was darker <laughs> than I like. I, I killed um, it, it's all right. It's, a <laughs> it's just darker than I like. You know, I like for it to not have that bitter note and sometimes when you cook the root too much, it gets a little bitter. All right, Chef, so if, as you're cooking this, we want people to know, those are watching on Facebook, uh, they can, everything you're seeing Chef Tiffany Dairy use, don't forget, you just click on the icon, like she just picked up the chicken stock, she's picking up the garlic powder, you click on those, it'll take you right to the magic of the interwebs to purchase said item. You can cook along with Chef Tiffany Dairy as she's doing it. I love it. All this right. It smells so good. So this, guys, is coming to you soon. This is my Chef Tiffany Spices. This is sort of my Creole seasoning. This is what we use for our duck fat fried chicken. We use it for everything um, as my all-purpose Creole seasoning. And I add this into my gumbo. You can also find it at any of my uh, Roots restaurants. So whether that's in H-E-B Mueller, whether that's in Plano at Legacy Hall, or at Root Southern Table. You know why we're kindred spirits, Chef? I'm gonna tell you why. Because why? I see you season food and you season it the exact way I do. You <laughs> season it forward. Yes. I feel like it's the biggest difference between a home cook and a home chef is the seasoning, right? It's Absolutely. Like seasoning well. Absolutely. And so what's gonna happen here is right now I am going to, I normally add a little bit more. So I'm using, again, some seafood stock. I have some chicken broth, but at the restaurant, we make duck stock with all of the duck bones that's left over. 
Yeah. And that is kind of something to add some richness. But the truth is that you really can flavor it. Growing up, my mom made this with water. <laughs> yeah, so water she, worked. I was, I was just going to ask that. You could just do it with water, You right? could do it with water, and I promise you're going to have so much flavor. Look, okay. cookie knows. We're not going to argue with cookie. Cookie knows. <laughs> cookie knows. All right, great. So now we're just going to let this cook off to the side. Again, my roux, my onions, my peppers, my celery, my garlic is in here. I added in the tomato and the stock, and I need this to come to a boil. Now we're going to get started on the eggnog. So that's got to hang out. You said 20 minutes. Let it yeah, go. you know, 15, 20 minutes and we'll finish it because we still have other another process to add. So I pre cooked my chicken and I pre roasted my okra and I'll show you that in a second. But that just helps with the whole process and it's important. All right. I just wait some some point we're going to figure out this whole how do you get things people to smell what's going on because it really does there's there's it's like without the roux it's not it's not gumbo right you don't have this, the smell it's the and you know what truthfully scott one of the reasons that it really is hard to make gumbo and when i say hard i don't mean as in things are just so difficult it's because you have to be aware of the smell and the flavor and how far to go with the roux. But I promise if you do it in the oven, it takes all of that work out of it. Otherwise, you're stirring. You don't want to get any spots. You don't want to have, you know, black pieces of flour in your roux. I mean, because if you do that, it's completely ruined. Yeah. Completely. Now, I love that tip. The oven is such, such an even way to cook, a little dry heat, so it just does everything a lot even, more even. Okay. So... This is my family's eggnog, and this is what I grew up eating. Like, I didn't really understand that eggnog, that everyone else didn't drink eggnog this way. Like, I thought everyone in the world did. Um, if you are from an area where you had hot eggnog, I want you to hit us up in the chat and let us know where you're from, because I want oh, yeah. to announce it. Because I, outside of that Baton Rouge area, I don't really know many people who do. And everywhere I go, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so good, it's so unique. Only eggnog um, I ever knew came out of a carton, right? So, Only okay, I so knew. I never had it out of a carton the whole time I grew up. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. You didn't miss a thing. <laughs> You didn't miss anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to separate some egg yolks. I have eight eggs here. Um, I've already done a few of them. And so all I'm doing is just separating the whites from the yolk. Those are for two different processes um, Processes that we're going to do. I love, we talked about, so this is your grandma's recipe, right? This, so this is. is. She was so pastry forward. I think we talked about this. Like she's literally, you're making this custard, this like pastry cream, this creme anglaise. Like sure. You're making like. You, like, no wonder you grew up and you loved this and never had to have the terrible store-bought stuff that I always grew up with as a kid because <laughs> you had the real deal. And it's I didn't even so know. Different. I was sitting on something and didn't know. I'm it wasn't until you. I got much older that I realized that. Okay, so I have my yolks, and I am going to take that. I'm going to put my whites, and I'm going to get them frothing. We're going to use that a little bit later. Okay, so here we go, egg yolks go in with sugar. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get all of my milks going. So I have four cans of evaporated milk, a can of condensed milk, and then I have a little bit of vanilla extract. We're going to get all of this going in a pot. I wanna bring it up to a boil, and then we're gonna temper in the egg yolk and sugar, which is important. Chef, uh, you, uh, you have a Friend Sharon from Indiana wants you to know she has never had hot eggnog. And, uh, and the people from Beaumont have also never had hot eggnog. They're super excited to see how all this works. I'm excited as well. I love it. You know, we did a, um, a live event with uh, you guys, HEB, um, last night, a very Texan holiday. Uh, and it was so much fun. And I shared sort of how we big picture make the eggnog and I knew tonight that I was going to show the details on how to make it and guys don't forget um, we also have the recipes online and um, how can they see the recipe just in case they're there they have they've already shared it when you were talking there was this super awesome uh, the way we do things uh, digitally that's so cool now there was a little a recipe that popped up on your right hand side I love it, it did not cover you but it had things uh, and I read this wrong Sharon from Indiana forgive me I have a hard time reading among every other thing she has had a hot eggnog and loves it. For those of you oh. that don't do hot eggnog, they usually do cold over ice. She's done the hot eggnog. 
But I feel like it's usually served kind of over ice, right? Is that kind of like most, most yeah, of the time you know, rice um, with your... A lot of people are very familiar with like coquito, right? And you have that, and that yep. is a Puerto Rican eggnog, which is delicious. I have a girlfriend, Naomi, who makes it really good. Outside of my mom's eggnog, th this is really the only one that I really, really love. So um, there, are, there is another version of eggnog that I like, but this is always number one. It's closest to my heart. Again, I have four cans of evaporated milk. I have um, one can of condensed milk, and then I have eight cups of water. So easily, what we do is we say for every can of evaporated milk, for every can of evaporated milk, you put two cups of water. So however many of those, if you got four, then we do eight cups. And if you want to multiply that and get a bigger batch, feel free to do it. So okay. here we have everything in. I have my evaporated milk, condensed milk, water, and a little vanilla extract, and I want to bring that up to a boil. Um, you don't want to overboil it, but you need it to be hot so that we can temper that egg yolk and sugar. Summer from Temple, Texas has never had hot eggnog. She was with me, and Sharon has, and she does, but she is very excited, uh, Summer, to, to share it with her kiddos, to introduce Yay! the kids to hot eggnog. I love it, and I can't wait for y'all to actually cook this at home because I know you're going to love it. All right, so I got my egg yolks here. I have some of my sugar. Does sugar fit? Yep. Yeah. Let me make sure. Feels like a lot. A lot, a lot of sugar. Cups. Three cups. cups sugar. Let's double. Let's confirm, because you know, I'm gonna drink this after, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Gotta make sure, One. make sure it's right. There you go. Yep, it's right. Three Scott cups. did good. Three cups with the yolks. Three cups, sugar, egg yolk. Mix it all in. All right, very important question here, Chef. Yes. Uh, would you put liquor in it now or before you serve it, if you're no. going to do it alcoholic? You want to add your, sh your liquor to your cup. Do not add it over the heat. Sometimes it can affect the texture, um, and you really don't want it to curdle on you. So in your glass, add your nog. Plus, <laughs> also, you don't want to burn off the alcohol. That's the whole reason you're putting it in the eggnog, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And you know what's funny? I didn't, I mean, obviously I didn't grow up because I was a child. Um, but we didn't really do, um, we didn't really do a lot of the nog growing up or I didn't see my family doing it. And so I like this recipe without any most of the time. And then every now and then I add a little something in it. Look, when you need, when you have homemade eggnog like this, I wouldn't spoil it with any alcohol either. You <laughs> need to put it in some of the stuff that you may buy, but this is like, you just, just as is. Yes. Okay, so this looks great. And now I am going to set this aside. Once my milk mixture is hot, I'm gonna whisk it in and get like a better texture so that I can pour it into the nog. So gumbo's working. We now have our nog working and let's move on to the cornbread. Oh, yeah. Now you said you can't, you can't do gumbo without cornbread. No, you know, you can, but why? <laughs> Exactly. Why? Would Why? You? Um, you know, in certain areas of, of Louisiana as well, they do um, potato salad with their gumbo. Okay. And so some people will do no rice or they will do rice and potato salad. Um, it was always different for me. Like, I don't know if I loved it, but um, I liked taking a little bit of my gumbo and scooping the potato salad like on my spoon. I never liked putting it in the bowl, but hey, you know, that's my own, <laughs> my own things, right? <laughs> I love it. Would you serve, they serve gumbo, would you typically have it any other way? It's either with rice or without rice, but they do, do they, does anybody use any other? No, I mean, with rice, not with, without rice or potato salad would be your options. A lot of people like, like saltine crackers on the side or something like that. Um, and those are, those are good as well, you know? Um, yeah. I just like rice with it. That's yeah. all honesty, I just like rice. Okay. Let's make some cornbread. All right. So we're going to do two cups of AP flour. And I want a knife. Two cups of flour. Now talk about your ratio a little bit, Chef. Do you do? Because you're going to, the ratio you're going to have here on your recipe is two cups flour and then you have the one cup. So you talked about a two to one ratio. Why Correct. You yeah. You know, so I like my cornbread to have some fluffiness. Um, sometimes it can be dry if you go heavier um, cornmeal. And I just like it to feel um kind of in between bread and cornbread and cake like that texture all three right 
Um, so two cups of flour, one cup of cornmeal gives you that, along with some um, baking powder. So I'm gonna put all of my dry in first. So I'm gonna do two and a half tablespoons of baking powder. It needs a lot of leaven, right? Because you've got, got a butter, you've got a lot of heavy stuff. Going Correct. We're going to add some egg. We're going to add in um, milk, right, and butter. So we definitely have to make sure that we have some, something in there to make it rise. Chef, i got a couple questions for you. Uh, what's a sub for okra in the gumbo? Is there a sub for okra? It's not necessary. <laughs> you know, sometimes people do gumbo all the time without um, okra. I like okra in it and sort of that root of okra is gumbo so that is to me meaning it meant to be in there but you know what the way we cook it you don't necessarily um, have the offense of what people do for okra. I love it in there and most people unless I tell them they don't really really understand you know like oh yeah. that's okay that's fine like great. And can you in your eggnog can you sub Splenda for the sugar? You most definitely can sub anything for it. I just don't know what that ratio would look like. But what I would say is to make sure you just taste it um, because really you're just tasting milk brought up to a boil. If you need more, then you can always add more. Yep, and brown sugar would work as well. And I imagine you can even do it with like molasses or honey and some of those, you just won't get that richness of the sweetness that you get um, with just having that sugar come up to a boil. Okay, I need a little salt. Uh-oh. She ready. Ready. That's all right. When you say talk to me, I talk <laughs> back. <laughs> I do all it right. all the time. So now I'm going to take, I have all of my dry ingredients in here. I am going to take my wet ingredients now, which is my milk and my egg and my butter. And I'm going to make a little well in the center of my mixture. I love it. And no, you don't really need to do cornbread in a mixer. In fact, you prefer not, right? No, I mean, you know, you don't really need to overmix it. Like sometimes when people put things in the mixer, they overmix the, um, the mixture. Like flour, if you mix it too long, it will become tough, anything with flour. So you want to be careful with that. Okay, so what we're going to do is take that very center. Y'all, I smell the kitchen smells good after oh that God. hit. All right, um, I'm going to add in my milk and egg right in the center. What is it about cornbread, right? Like, what is it about cornbread that when you eat, like, you just, like, when you, it's so, like, you can't not eat it if you make it, right? Like, you can't just be like, oh, I'll just put this on the side or whatever. Like, you, you're going to eat all of it with whatever you're going to, whatever you're serving with. Absolutely. So, I have corn going in, fresh corn, fresh jalapeno, and then we're going to add in some cheese. I'm just looking at that milk over there. <laughs> I put the lid on it to make it work quicker, but we're good. Yes, I am so excited. It smells so good. Gumbo in San Antonio, baby. That's it, that's it. And so we do need it to boil at this moment, the gumbo, because we need the roux to activate. If it's not boiling, it won't activate, meaning it won't help thicken, and it won't cook off that flour or any of that flavor. You need everything to come together. So That's I'm really going to add tip. in. Sometimes you don't cook the flour enough. The last thing you want is flour, <laughs> raw flour. Mess up your whole flavor. gumbo. It won't taste like good gumbo, that's for sure. Not at all. And guess what, y'all? This either can be whisked or mixed. So all I want to do is just get it coming together. Once it comes together, I'm good to go. So I have my jalapenos. I have my cheese, cornmeal, some milk. This recipe uses milk, not buttermilk. So you're not gonna get some of that tang that you get. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect. So that's all you're looking for. So it just kind of comes together again. You're not overworking it. You're just kind of getting it Absolutely. homogenous. Now, as far as customizing cornbread, what are some ways you like to kind of customize? You're doing a jalapeno cheese cornbread today like but what are there's what are some ways you like to customize cornbread for those of um you? I love adding even like let's say that I want this to be more of the meal I'll add in maybe sausage I'll add in ground meat um things like that already cooked um and it's great as a whole meal as well so like adding that in you can add in spinach you can do any really grated zucchini things like that grated carrot if you want to get crazy but honestly the thing is that the base of the flavor is so good that anything in it 
It goes. You're good to go. Now, Chef, what did you just do to that fantastic K&T borosilicate uh, casserole dish? Let's, what, what is it? It's a borosilicate. I, uh, it's, me and borosilicate are just, we're like, we're like kin. We're just, we're like, we, we are one and the same. I like saying the word, I like saying it so much. And I've only broken a couple of them here on set. So, you know, I feel like I, I owe it, I owe the borosilicate a so lot. So you know that they're durable. <laughs> they are. It survived me. Oh my gosh. So I added in just a little bit of soft butter, some butter, um, to the bowl or to the, the dish. Um, I'm, I'm with you. And um, that just helps it from sticking. So that way it looks good. All right, now my cornbread is ready for the oven. Yes, it looks good. That's it. Go in the oven 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm gonna stick a toothpick in it to see if it's done. And that's it. Beautiful. This is great. Everything is working. Eggnog is, eggnog is working. You got your roux is boiling, the yes, cornbread's yes, in the oven. Yes. All coming together beautifully, Chef. It is looking fantastic. Okay, come on over here, guys. I want to show you this real quick. So, put this up. Here in my pot, I have, again, that roux, the onions, the peppers, the celery. Now, it's time to pick up some flavor. So, what I've done is pre-roasted my chicken. You can do it with chicken breasts. You can do it with chicken thighs. Whatever you may have. But this keeps it from shredding in your gumbo later. So have you ever had gumbo? This is my mom's pet peeve. Gumbo that is all shredded. She just can't stand it. So if you cook it ahead, um, pre-roast it, you will definitely not have, you'll have chunks in your gumbo, which is what so you So Cookie want. doesn't like the shredded, she likes like the chunks of chicken in oh, there. Oh, it all bothers right. her so much. I'm glad I know. I'm glad I know, because if, uh, if I make her a pot of gumbo, it definitely will not have any shredded chicken in that one. <laughs> okay, so I took some okra, cut it up, added salt, pepper, and olive oil. Then I roast it on a high heat in the oven for about 10 minutes. That way, you lose the slime, and that's so important with making this gumbo, because there shouldn't be. We should get texture from the okra. We should get flavor from the okra. We are not going to get slime. So now you said earlier though there's certain gumbo like that's kind of like they used to like that they just with the raw gumbo it adds that texture which does that and it sounds it's gonna sound gross and I mean it's snotty that snotty texture right it gives it because it gives that real and that's not no I don't want the slime um, but there are there are many cultures where in why when adding in okra they will pulse it or they will chop it up so that you do have sort of that. Um, slime texture, which is a desired in some areas. I don't desire it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna check clean, for salt. Clean, beautifully thickened gum. I do, and we're getting there. Tastes yeah. pretty good. I wanna add a little bit of a touch of uh, cayenne. Mm. Now, what is your, what's your spice level, Chef? Are you like, are you like a full-blown, like throw the Serranos, the Thai birds, like all that stuff? Are you kind of like, where, where are you at with that? I can go really hot, um, but I don't when I'm cooking for others, you know? Like, just because I love heat doesn't mean that everyone does. If I know that people who enjoy the heat, um, then I will do it. But what I feel about gumbo specifically is that it should be balanced. If you want more spice, you add in hot sauce. If you want a little bit more of all of that flavor, then you can do it on your own, but I don't like making it extremely spicy. That's good. I'm a self-proclaimed spice wuss, so I love the <laughs> flavor of a lot of peppers, but I just can't handle the, I get those like cold sweats where you're like. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh. That's hilarious. Okay, so let's see how we're doing here. Milk's getting hot. Oh yeah. Look at that. She hasn't come up to a full boil yet but she's hot enough for me to temper. And that's all I need. I need it to be really hot um, because we're gonna put it all back together. Chef, I know you're gonna explain it, but will you, will you talk a little bit about the tempering aspect Absolutely. for this? this is, I'm telling you, your grandma was like, she had some, she had some mad pastry skills. <laughs> right? So she would, um, basically when you're talking about tempering, all that means is that you want something that has egg in it in order for it to not scramble, you have to bring this up to temperature. <clears throat> to temperature. 
So you have to make sure that you get the milk into the egg without it curdling. And then once you add some of that hot liquid into this, this is now hot and then we add it back in there and now it will cook and it won't scramble on you. So it's just a process of like making sure you get it up to temperature quickly. Love it. Okay. Yeah, last thing you want in that fantastic, like well-made, uh, you know, your eggnog is to have those stringy, like, oh look, this stringy eggs in here. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that would be horrible. <laughs> I might get this on <laughs> for my family. I love it. And I, what I love about your, your, your eggnog too, it's so clean. You know what I mean? It's just, it's really clean flavors, but they're so, everything melded together works so well. I'm so excited for the finale of your eggnog. You don't even know. I'm not going <laughs> to spoil it because I spoiled it in rehearsal. I'm going to leave it totally up to you to say, but it's really, I'm really excited. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring in a little bit more. So just slowly working, and when, and how do you know when it's tempered? When you get like, so you want to feel the of... bottom of the bowl, and when the bottom of the bowl feels really hot, like it's that temperature, then we're good to go. And oh, let's say that you have a little bit, like you you were tempering, but you got a little bit of some specks in there, right? Um, what you can do is just strain out this mixture, um, just strain it, and then go right back in. And all of those little pieces will be gone before you put it into the, the larger amount. So that way easy. it stays nice and, nice and silky and yes, smooth. Yes, absolutely. Chef, question for you. Uh, does your, when you use your Creole seasoning, your homemade one from Roots, do you mm -hmm. omit the other seasonings if you're going to add that? Or do you still need the other seasonings and you use that to taste? I keep the seasoning um, not as spicy and not as much salt as some pre-made seasonings. Um, and the reason I do that is because everyone has a different level of spice that they want, a level of salt maybe that they're restricted to. And I just prefer to add more if I want more of something. The seasoning on its own is very, very delicious, um, has enough spice for me. But sometimes depending on what I am cooking, I may want more, you know, cayenne. I may want more salt, um, depending on what it is, so. Nice. So now we take this, this which is really hot, and we mix into this. So it's beautifully tempered, and everything just goes back in the pot. Look at that. And what we a just shot, Rob, it. what a shot. It's got the whole thing drizzling from, <laughs> from high up above, Chef. I love it. Oh my gosh. And now all I have to do is let this come back up to temperature. So you bring that to a, what, a simmer, Chef, or a boil? What do you I want it for? now simmering. No boiling. No more boiling. We're done with a boil. I needed that milk to come up, but now no, no, no. So a nice simmer. Yep. I'm going to put it on the back and let it really cook. Yes. Okay. So the other thing I want to add here is a little bit of that nutmeg just to get the smells of the holiday going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That the such holiday great, smells. It is. It has such a warm kind of like flavor it adds to so many things. It's really great spice. And you don't do cinnamon, right? We talked about cinnamon earlier. No, we, we don't, don't do cinnamon. We only do nutmeg. And I think that's also what kind of differentiates the flavor. Yeah. Like you really just like that taste to come through. No questions yet? Am I just that good, Scott? What's going we are on? enamored with what's going on. We are so excited you're sharing your, your family's recipes, your grandma's egg. I think, well, I'm just like literally like mouth agape, like watching this whole thing. And everybody's just loving the, uh, they're excited for the gumbo. They're asking some questions. You're, you're, you're just, you're doing it such a fantastic oh, job, buddy. Steph. They're just, we're just rolling. We're rolling. Okay. We're with help. you 100%. Yay. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay, gumbo is looking fantastic. And the folks on Facebook are giving you more love than we can possibly communicate at one time. But just know there's a lot of capital L-O-V-E coming oh your way. Oh my gosh, I love y'all. Okay, guys, guess what? Gumbo is looking good. It's almost ready. Um, I am going to do one more thing for our eggnog, and that is make the meringue. So one of the things that make ours special is that we take meringue, which is egg whites, we beat them, and then at the end, we float them on top of the knob. 
It's my favorite. It's the, I'm telling you, your grandma had like the floating island thing. That's like a that's like an old oh school. I mean, that's it's so so you're like getting basically homemade marshmallows on exactly. top of your eggnog. That's why we keep saying my grandmother was before her time because like that's a very technical thing to do and a very French thing to do. But you know, Louisiana French. I'm pretty yep. sure it, you know it got picked up somewhere. So I have just egg whites in here, and we're just gonna beat this. Chef, in your opinion, when you're using chicken in the gumbo, what's the best part of the chicken to use? Do you like thigh, breast? Like, what do, you, what do you like better? Or does it matter? I really like um, a combination of dark and white meat. Um, but most commonly, so like at our home, my mom would take wingettes and season them, pop oh, yeah. them in the oven like I did, brown, and then we put chicken wingettes in the gumbo along with chicken pieces of thighs and breasts. Um, that are off the bone. So it's a combination typically of on the bone, off the bone. And I love that as well. You know, some people don't necessarily want to get in there, but I put whole pieces of crab usually in mine, so I don't mind at all. I love that. Woo! Yeah, and all that, obviously you're getting whole crab legs. That's all, the, all that shell is just going to add to that flavor. Same thing with those chicken wings. That's a great, that's a great thing too. Get those bones in there flavoring up that base. So that's what we're get looking that. for. Get out. All right, that. I want mine in the biggest cup you got, Chef. <laughs> So we are going to add this once our milk comes a little bit more up to a boil, and that's going to go straight into our egg. So uh, hang on, chef. So hang on. So you, so you got these whipped egg whites. They're ready to go. So your grandma would just scoop out the egg whites, put them right on top of the thing, and just let them. And she would slowly add, and she would take, and she would put a little bit of nog over the top and let them cook that way, and then hit it with fresh nutmeg at the end. Come on! <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like I'm like I'm like so I'm, in, good. I'm in, It's like, it's crazy. And the other thing that I have already done is I have my um, jasmine rice done. So we'll have that with our our food. And I love jasmine rice. I love all of the notes that you get. It smells fragrant. It just tastes delicious. I am not a fan of parboiled rice. It's just not my thing. Um, grew up with it. Everyone else seems to love it or like it a lot, but there is something special about jasmine rice that I love. All right, uh, Chef, I want you to know Cookie's watching on Facebook. Cookie, your mother's watching on Facebook, wants to know if she's getting some of this tonight. <laughs> you gonna make oh, her some? Oh, Mom. Um, she is not here with us. I, she's going to get me for this eggnog. That's what she's going to get That's me. That's all right. Little, little caramelization of those egg proteins. We're all right. I like it. We're good. <laughs> hey, guess what? She ready. <laughs> um, and so we're going to take this now and I'm going to add in all of my seafood and get that flavor from that as well. So you got some, you got some rice, you got some, oh, sorry, you got some shrimp and crab, mm -hmm. chef. You're going to do the last second because everything else is kind of all like. Everything is already cooked. Ooh. We don't overcook it. Yes, cornbread is looking fantastic. It's almost done. Cookie, if you're listening, uh, you were missed. I had adoption papers ready for you to sign to adopt me. You weren't here. We'll do it next time. Just know that I was really, <laughs> really, really sad you weren't here in person. But uh, we got you. We got we we did get William, the fiance, your fiance. We didn't say congratulations. She just got engaged. I forgot to say that at the very beginning. <laughs> this is not just a holiday show. It's your it's your engagement show. This is my engagement show, guys. <laughs> I, I didn't know, but next time that's hopefully right. I'll be actually eating on my engagement show instead of cooking. But <laughs> that's okay. I'm gonna add in just a little more salt. And ooh, smells good. Look at Here that. we go. We can see gonna, all things from mm. the sky cam. It all looks really good, Chef. Yes. We're going to add in some crab. And this is some um, all natural crab meat jumbo lump pieces. You see that? Look at that. Look at that piece. Look at those wow. Huge pieces. There I don't go. make mine like that at home. And you, said, and you said earlier, you said like you just use the crab legs. I use, you throw those in yep. There. I use crab pieces. Like um, I use just like blue crab, like for, you know, that you put in gumbo. Like, so Absolutely. I'll cut them in half and let them go in. Big old beautiful Gulf shrimp. Yes, let that. You don't want to overcook your shrimp and your crab. I'm going to also add in a little bit of parsley and green onion now. A lot of people are saying congratulations on your engagement to both Thank you and you. William. Congratulations. Um, Vic wanted to know, what else can you use instead of chicken? If you don't want to use chicken, what else can you use? Whatever you like, Vic. Honestly, the truth is you find so many different types of gumbo. You find just seafood gumbo, which is great. Um, you find duck. I've had a lot of like duck gumbo as well. 
So it's really about whatever your preference is, what you enjoy eating, um, and just go from there. I'm gonna wash my hands for that crap. All smells so good. The overhead shot, the rice, the gumbo. Look at how colorful that gumbo is. Look at all that, the okra, parsley. Got those shrimp in there. Yes. A nice dark roux. Time for the nog. Oh man. Okay, so as you guys can see. I could not, I'm like literally, I'm, I, feel like I wanna hop out of my seat, but I'm, <laughs> I'm tethered by this microphone. I wanna come over there and watch you lay those, those the, the, the marshmallows in. Let's go. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, your grandma was so ahead of her time, <laughs> Chef. This is insane. Get it, in. I love this. I so love this. This is like our favorite part. We only, you don't need all that's in here, but um, I will tell you, the next day, whatever you have left over, we typically will take out the rest of those egg whites, and you just have that, because the next day the egg whites get a little too hard. But hopefully, you won't even have anything left. And then you take that and you just slightly cook all of those egg whites. You see what's happening here? Scott's quiet, y'all. You know what that means. He's loving it. Oh, come on. <laughs> and you just do that and kind of get it uh, slightly like, cooking. See, just a little over the top. And then you can't stop there you're gonna take some of that fresh nutmeg there you go. and you're gonna take and just get freshness all over the top. A lot of nutmeg, no such thing as too much. And that's where that really great fresh nutmeg that really comes through. Y'all, so the good. smells, the smells here. Seeing a close up of it just snowing nutmeg, Chef. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Every pan you're seeing uh, Chef Tiffany Dare using is all of our K&T pans. You can find at most HEBs. Uh, they're fantastic. Obviously, they're great to make a big pot of gumbo or a giant pot of fantastic eggnog <laughs> with floating islands on top. Get out of town. Look at that. That's it, guys. Let's plate her up. Let's see what we got. I'm so excited. I'm ready oh to gosh. eat tonight. Look at that. A little bit more time on that shrimp. Almost there. I'm going to put the lid. Hopefully, I don't, you know. Do I can smell your thing. cornbread, too, Chef. Cornbread's Smell almost it. ready. Mm. I'm gonna add a little more crab because why not? We got it. Yep, that's exactly right. Y'all. And then the last thing that you add into your gumbo is your filet. And filet is sassafras. So you just wanna add this in at the very last minute when you don't really need to cook it much more. So why, why at the last minute, Chef? So what happens, the last, like, so sassafras is also a thickener. And so if you add it in and you keep boiling it or you boil it, it will kind of come out a little stringy. So you just want to be careful. And gumbo without filet, to me, it doesn't have the right flavor. Like the, it's, it's like the last flavor you add that is so important. Just completes that entire, like, the gumbo feel, right? The whole, the that's whole it. Thing. That's it. And then we also at the restaurant will take and add um, filet right on top of your bowl. So we serve it with a little hot sauce and like we're gonna show you now and then we add in a little bit of filet on top. What's All your right. favorite hot sauce to use in your gumbo, Chef? What do you, what do you, what do you We make to? our own. <laughs> we go. make our own, but I mean, I love so many different types of hot sauce, let's just be honest. I mean, all of it worked for me. Um, Louisiana, I love. Yep. Can we talk about how cute this is? Snowflake. Can we talk about how cute 34th in Maine is? I love HB it. Bowl, no I love it. Okay, let's let's eat. I'm ready. So we're gonna take some of that rice. Actually, I'm gonna wait on the rice because I'm too excited. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just ready to eat. <laughs> Ooh, doggy. Y'all see that? Look at all the inclusions. Like it's like, I mean, seriously. And what I love about your tips too, Chef, like the roasting the okra, the the, the par cooking, the roasting the chicken ahead of time is that it doesn't have to be just special occasion. Like you can absolutely do this. Like this could be a weeknight meal, spend a little more time doing it, but you come out with a fantastic, like talk about a way to, you know, jazz up hump day on Wednesday. It's like full of gumbo. My mom cooked gumbo every other week in our house growing up. It was never a just celebratory thing. 
just want a few extra pieces of that crab. Where's she at? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Gosh, Lord have mercy. Okay. We're going to take this over here. And we're so gonna much happening in that pot. It's so garnish fun. it with a little bit of green onion. And then I always take a little bit of the hot sauce. You little dashes. Mmm. Okay. It just sings, right? You get a little hot. You get a little, you know, you get all that savory. You got that great seafood, the umami from all that tomato. It's everything kind of cooking and doing there. Is that my cup? That's yours. I could not be more excited right now. Y'all, here we go. This is the moment we all have been waiting on. Mama Cookie's eggnog. So this just like, this is just like, so if I, so when Cookie invites me over, I know I'm going to get the invite any minute now. I'm going to get the invite <laughs> to come over for eggnog on New Year's Eve or uh, Christmas Eve. Like, this is just, you just serve up a cup of nog and everybody's just, this is like, why didn't I grow up like this? Like, what, I don't like, know. What, there's, I, there's so much missing from my life, Tiffany. I see. So much. I, and I feel a little sad for you that you didn't get it. Man. But guess what? It can now be your tradition. Come on. Look at that. With your family, y'all. Oh. And if you like the, yeah. the mug that Chef Tiffany's using, you can get it at H-E-B. You can find those fantastic holiday mugs a little bit of time at your local agency. There's so many great mugs. Look at that cornbread. Look at that cornbread. Woo, okay. Right on cue. Oh my right gosh. Y'all, we're not having any cornbread if we don't get a little bit of oh, that butter go. right there. Cover the whole top. Get so are going. you, a, so I was gonna ask this, are you, a, I feel like when it, when it comes to cornbread, I gotta have honey and I gotta have butter on the cornbread. Are you, yeah? Yes, okay. I'm all, I, I, sure I'm I don't company. necessarily need butter. Sometimes, I mean, um, I don't necessarily need honey, I need butter. Um, sometimes we do it with steams, which is a cane oh, yeah. syrup, Let's right? See. So I like it with steams as well. Oh, buddy, y'all, first That's cut. That's great, we sell steams at HEB. You can find steams there, cans of I the love cane steams. syrup, also really good. Little yep, little I drizzle that as well. Ooh. Yeah. Are y'all ready? We could just, you could just cut it in half and you and I, we'll just, we'll just have big, big chunks. We'll just go. I mean, if the first, if the first one comes out right, like, I don't even oh. know, you know, like that first. Look at that. Come on. Light. So this is what I, this is what I want to say about your recipe. The two to one ratio, you get that beautifully fluffy cornbread. Absolutely. Really fluffy. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely. Because I So Summer just wants you to know, my husband doesn't like cornbread, but he asked me to try this recipe for him. Love cornbread, can't wait to try it. Let it fall. Watch we it, are watch so it fall. with you, Summer. Summer, he's going to love it, and now he's not going to be a cornbread person. Let that just fall on down. Yeah, you can do the whole thing. You leave that whole there. It is. Yes. Oh, yes. Don't worry, I'll get that piece. It fell oh, off. No, that's, that's, right. for, that's for snacking later. <laughs> and then we take a little bit of that honey. Oh, come on. And we just drizzle that. Summer, it's right there. Chef Tiffany Dairy, right there. Your husband's going to love that cornbread. And, and forever, from here on out, he'll always go, can you make cornbread tonight, honey? And you're going to be like, look at this. Chef Tiffany Dairy <laughs> changed, changed his world. Oh, my gosh. So, oh my gosh. again, our gumbo with seafood and chicken and sausage and shrimp and crab that can be made any night. But our very special eggnog, and we cannot forget our jalapeno and cheese cornbread. Over to you, Scott. So ridiculous. By the way, uh, if you want to, this is not uh, Chef Tiffany Dairy's first rodeo in so many ways, but she has actually been here before. You can always check out what you missed in the last 12 months, Chef Tiffany Dairy included. Go to youtube.com slash to check it all out. To find out what's coming up next week, uh, this is where also when I talk about the voids in my life, Chef, uh, I never made gingerbread houses when I was growing up. We never did that. <gasps> Me neither. So we're both going to watch next week. Chef Charlotte's going to do some gingerbread, homemade gingerbread, homemade gingerbread houses, uh, because that's another, another huge void. Am I, are you drinking my eggnog? I'll, I'll get you another. <laughs> uh, Chef, thank you so much uh, for uh, great other, other great content. You can always go to our, our website, hb.com slash classes. More great stuff for the new year. Chef, tell them where we find everything Tiffany Dairy. Give us all your everything. I'll have, just make it, please. Just make this oh, we will. and feel how happy it makes you. Brings joy. Um, you can come to either of my restaurants, whether that is in Roots Chicken Shack in Plano inside of Legacy Hall, 
We're also, we also have a Roots Chicken Shack in H-E-B Mueller location in Austin, and then Root Southern Table here in Dallas and Farmer's Branch, uh, where you can find our gumbo in a version of another cornbread there. If you're looking for me on social, I'm on Instagram as MasterChefTD or Chef Tiffany Derry on Facebook. And to know what's happening next and what shows I'll be on and where you can find me, where in the world is Tiffany, who knows? Go to TiffanyDairyConcepts.com. Beautiful. And Jake, by the way, congratulations again. You and your man on the, uh, the engagement. Congratulations. So great. <laughs> and Chef, God bless you and all the great success you have. Please come back and keep seeing us. We love having you here. Thanks so much. You're always, always the best. Bye, y'all. Go cook. <laughs>